whether you're going to be picking up the name of the rose because you just want a really good murder mystery whether it's because you want the absolutely beautiful lyrical and kind of meandering sentences and just like writing style that's going on in this thing or whether you just want the setting the creepy kind of twisted gothic vibes of this 14th century italian abbey or whether you're joining this party for those kind of infamous 10 page theological discussions chronicling the semantics of whether Jesus laughed or not <laughs> uh which he definitely did by the way debate me in the comments <laughs> I'm just kidding literally don't please don't or all of the above it doesn't matter because there's something in this book for everybody oh what a harmony of abandonment and impulse of unnatural and yet graceful postures in that mystical language of limbs miraculously freed from the weight of corporal matter marked quantity infused with substantial form as if the holy band were struck by an impetuous wind breath of life frenzy of delight rejoicing song of praise miraculously transformed from the sound that it was into image this book is worth the effort that echo makes you put into it i think that's really what makes this book so great i was watching an interview by echo it was it's on the louisiana channel but he said something that i really really liked and he was talking about authors when they're first kind of conceiving a story or a novel that they want to like pursue and flesh out that they think of their target audience and then kind of work from there and kind of build their story up around the type of reader that they want to attract to their book. And Echo said that he kind of almost does the opposite and I really respect this about him, that he doesn't come up with like a prototype of a reader he wants and then write for them, but oppositely he writes to kind of build up the reader and shape the reader into the type of person he wants to experience the book which is why he kind of refused to water down the story or make it more palatable or easier to digest for the general public like maybe some of his publishers or like editors wanted him to do because he was true to his vision and i think that kind of artistic integrity is so apparent when you're reading this book and is one of the things that makes it so great and I really just don't want that to be overlooked in lieu of oh my god that was so dense oh my gosh why is there so much latin in this book why are there so many foreign languages why do I have to translate so much why are these conversations so long like that's the beauty of the book and if you're really not into that sort of thing of course you know you can go ahead and skip out on this one he is paving the way and exposing you know the average person like myself who's not going to know about 14th century academia <laughs> um and religious theories to a world that i never would have known anything about and i think that that's just something so important and beautiful about this story this book has been completely tattered to shreds i don't know if you can see the dust jacket on this thing but it has been just absolutely destroyed i was like looking back at my goodreads like kind of history and i originally added the name of the rose to my tbr or like want to read list in 2014 when i was 15 years old <laughs> and i just find that kind of funny i meant uh, i think I'm not saying this book is like inaccessible to like a teenager. I don't think that at all. And I think many people read this when they're a teen. I think maybe a lot of them in Italy too. I'm glad that I'm reading it now when I'm, how old am I? I'm the ripe old age of 23. Cause I just feel like I got more out of this book now. Um, just where I am now in my life. Sorry, I'm just like looking at a hummingbird as outside than I would have when I was a 15 year old. The Name of the Rose doesn't need much of an introduction i don't think but basically we're following kind of two primary characters william of baskervilles um a sherlockian older monk 
and his younger novice kind of that he's the mentor of named Adso through their kind of perilous week at a very famous Italian abbey, a very famous Italian monastery. William is originally called there to kind of facilitate a debate slash lecture between this one sect of Catholicism called the Franciscans and the Pope and I think some other players because they're kind of having a little beef. So he's kind of, he's kind of there to, like I said, facilitate a, a discussion between the two groups. And almost immediately after he gets to the Abbey, he's drawn into another issue entirely. And that is he, there are some mysterious, nefarious, diabolical things going on in this Abbey, starting with a dead body and another dead body and another dead body and the numbers are racking up people want to know what's going on is it suicide is it murder we don't know and our sherlockian monk and his young watson are kind of ensued on this really crazy week because this book as big as it is this tome 500 pages all takes place over the course of a week a lot of people, I, especially just on Goodreads, one of the main complaints about this tome of a novel, um, because it is, like I said, 500 pages, is that it is just too dense. And I see the word dense kind of thrown around a lot, almost kind of as like an insult. And while I think the book definitely is dense, I kind of want to shy away from saying that it is too dense of a read because I really don't think it is. Because there's a, a big difference between something being dense and then something being unnecessarily long-winded. And there's a difference between something being dense and then something being like gratuitous. And while The Name of the Rose is extremely like erudite and can be difficult and long-winded at certain points, um, especially I felt that way a little bit towards like the last hundred pages or so when the action was kind of finally being deciphered and such. I never thought that it was too much of something. And I don't think we should ever ask authors to water down the potency of their visions in order to make something more palatable or easily digested by the like average public um because umberto echo is i meant uh was at the extremes of like academia and knowledge and his history and like all of these amazing subjects and he was a very learned educated man it is very very obvious like from the get-go when you're reading umberto echo um when you're reading the name of the rose that's what makes the name of the rose the name of the rose and i kind of even as an average reader someone who is not like pursuing a phd in medieval theology history and literature uh, <laughs> shout out to sean from travel with stories he is awesome um but as like like i'm saying a representative of the more average reader I am so happy that he didn't because like I said, the name of the rose wouldn't be the name of the rose without all of that in there. That's definitely not to say that some of this book did not literally fly straight over my head into the horizon, never to be seen again, but it's part of what made this book satisfying to read, what made it believable, it's what made it atmospheric, it's what made it immersive and even if, like I said, you're not pursuing a, you know, PhD in medieval studies, if you can't appreciate kind of the scope of what is being done in this book, even if you're not going to get all the discussions going on, then you're really truly doing yourself a disservice. And I just think it's better to go in kind of accepting you're not going to catch up on everything. I don't think Umberto Eco thought that every single person who was going to pick up this book was going to get every single thing that he was referencing. So whether you're going to be picking up The Name of the Rose 
because you just want a really good murder mystery whether it's because you want the absolutely beautiful lyrical and kind of meandering sentences and just like writing style that's going on in this thing or whether you just want the setting the creepy kind of twisted gothic vibes of this 14th century italian abbey or whether you're joining this party for those kind of infamous 10 page theological discussions chronicling the semantics of whether Jesus laughed or not. <laughs> uh, which he definitely did, by the way. Debate me in the comments. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Literally don't. Please don't. Or all of the above. It doesn't matter because there's something in this book for everybody. So like I said, this book, we are following the week in the life of this Sherlock figure and a young novice who are investigating these kind of series of murders that are going down at this abbey. Echo's writing, I meant, what a talent. This is personally <laughs> like the height of what I look for in writing style and what I like really enjoy. Um, we have these long, exhaustive, and I say exhaustive as a compliment, beautifully vivid descriptions and sentences that just do it for me. It tickles my fancy. It really does. I love that stuff. This book, um, sometimes Echo would just go into, in his, during his descriptions, would just go into lists uh, as part of descriptions of things or dreams or whatever. And uh, particularly towards the beginning of the book, we have this really long description. I think it's four or five pages of a door. <laughs> just like this beautifully um carved intricate door and it oh, like no joke like was like on the brink of bringing me to tears how beautiful it was and this is like this is why i read <laughs> this is why i i'm in the game you know for for this kind of stuff and sometimes you would like i say go into these exhaustive lists that would take up like half a page or more and I love that stuff. I personally love it. So we kind of can't get out of talking about The Name of the Rose without discussing the bulk of the book, which takes up these kind of long uh, philosophical, theological discussions involving history and religion and all this kind of interesting stuff. This is the main complaint that people have about this book um, and that it bogs down the narrative. I can see why people could think that. I got a little bit exasperated but towards like the very end when I was kind of waiting for everything to wrap up but for the majority of the book all of these like theological discussions even though I'm not as knowledgeable as I would like to be to really fully be able to discern and be up to par on all of these like intricate details um, and the scope of everything that was being discussed I nevertheless found them really interesting to follow and while they had a lot of like references that not maybe the average person is going to understand or be able to take in, they were still I feel like not completely inaccessible. You could still follow the story, you know what I'm saying? You could still follow the basic train of thought that each person was saying or like what their point of view was like I never felt like super super lost and I truly just loved the feeling of being a fly on the wall um, and privy to these really kind of interesting discussions going on even though they were meandering <laughs> at certain points I and mean, that's one of the reasons that I love like reading like Dostoevsky and stuff because you know he can go on for like 20 pages and it's just like two people sitting in a room talking like Echo is definitely in that like tier of authorship you know he he can do that and get away with it in my opinion because he's just that good you're really getting this like peer and this look into 14th century like academia and the religious world and their philosophy and the way they lived and the way they thought and i mean where else are you going to 
kind of get such a well-constructed and detailed glimpse into this world that is so far removed from us as modern humans like you're just not going to find it in a lot of places and so the fact that echo really so beautifully constructed this for us and put in so much time and effort and to to like penning this is truly a treat i do want to talk about like the like sheer amount of latin in this book echo he was he really was a beast he did not come to play in this book and he didn't he did not mess around um during my first kind of initial start of reading this book i've tabbed a lot as you can see but i was a very loyal and diligent reader I was stopping every time there was Latin or French or Italian and I was translating it and I was annotating it and I was tabbing it and I was like I'm gonna solve this mystery I like, was really like into that eventually it did get a little um, too much for me uh, where I just wanted to keep reading so I eventually did stop, like start ignoring the Latin essentially because I didn't want to stop every three or four pages, sometimes once a page to translate something into English. That may have been a detriment to me in the long run. Maybe not. I mean, I still immensely enjoyed the book. So there's that. But Echo did get me in the end because uh, the famously the last line in this book is in Latin. So I couldn't completely ignore him for the rest of the time. I did have to go translate the last sentence of the book which is just so hilarious to me on so many levels but um it was worth it it was beautiful but it did kind of get to a point where I was like I just I don't have the energy to be translating like all of this foreign language um and I didn't want to I just wanted to like continue my 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 journey with this book I'm so glad I have like added this to my like personal library of books that I read because there's really not a lot of things like this out there oopsie my video accidentally cut off but final thoughts final thoughts this was a four to five stars it was riveting it was beautiful i cannot wait to read more umberto echo and after this i'm definitely gonna have to take a little bit of like a brain break i'm thinking of just going to read like a comic or something like that so that i don't have to work as hard as i did with this book but my final verdict is that everybody should read this and you should go get yourself a copy. And as always, happy reading, losers.